Hey everybody, it's Ben Hartwig with DellScan, and today I'm going to show you with our Artec Space Spider 3D scanner how we can use it to capture and either digitally archive or recreate historic pieces or preserve some of our heritage. So I have here today a wooden piece from a historic building that actually has some damage on it. And then we also have a keyhole um, door ornament that has quite a bit of detail that we'll see better when I actually scan it. So uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use uh, the Space Spider, capture millions of points per second that will replicate the surface, and then we will take those points and convert it to make a, a solid model. So check it out. Okay, so our Space Spider is plugged in, and it is warmed up to our optimal temperature. That takes about three minutes, and uh, we have our object on the Lazy Susan here. This is going to help us capture all the angles a little bit easier. So I am using a feature called automatic base removal. So you can see when I point at that flat Lazy Susan, it detects a base and says, okay, now I can flip the switch and begin recording. And in this case, we're just going to basically paint the part with uh, the light from our scanner and make sure that we have a loose, uh, flexible wrist to capture all the different angles. That's the benefit of having a handheld scanner is that you don't have to <clears throat> capture the part and then move the part down. You can just move your scanner to a position where you can capture all the angles that you need. So, um, so make sure we get all the way down to where it meets the platform. Go back to this side. Make sure we get all that. around let's just make sure we got this edge and it looks like we are good so I flip the switch down and say indicate that we're done scanning and uh, one thing to note it does have a flat back so there's really no geometry other than some wear and tear that we probably don't even want so rather than me flipping it over and scanning the backside to align it uh, I'm just gonna use a hole filling tool so I'll process what we did capture and then we'll use a hole fill and give it a nice flat uh, back. So let's take a quick look and make sure, um, and we'll move on to uh, processing the data. So upon reviewing here, it looks like we captured all the surfaces that we would need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close out the scan operation. That's going to start the automatic base removal, which will crunch for just a second and should eliminate all of the platform that the object's sitting on. And that worked perfectly. So but the first thing we're going to do is the global registration. There's some parameters here that the defaults generally work pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and hit that and let that crunch for a second. So the global registration looks great. Next thing we're going to do is take this thing and convert it into a mesh. And for that, we're going to use Sharp Fusion. Now, we typically don't want to use... Um, uh, when we do a Sharp Fusion, we're taking all the points and creating triangles. And the resolution that we choose here... Uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, determines the size of those triangles. So uh, we have a great quality scan here, but there's not a lot of intricate details. For, so for speed and for uh, nice good surfaces, uh, 300 micron triangles should work just fine. We have the option to do watertight, but I wouldn't want to do that since we didn't fill in the backside. It would kind of give a, a, a blob there. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, fill all holes of a certain radius. And the default of, of five millimeters is, is generally pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that and let that crunch. Okay, so we're done with the sharp fusion and we can see uh, pretty high level of detail even with uh, without using extremely small triangles to create this. So, but we still have the hole in the back. So if I go in the fix holes tool now, I can kind of use our We'll use a select uh, the hole, and we will fill the hole. Okay, so our hole filling alg algorithm is complete, and you can see some of the edges have some of those natural bumps from just years of, of uh, wear and tear, but <clears throat> the hole filled in pretty nicely, so we could take this uh, right to a 3D printer, 
or we could take this in uh, in this case and and actually try to repair some of these uh, artistic features on here. So uh, that's pretty much it. You're ready to export this. We would save this out normally as an STL file. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And if there's any questions, our contact information is readily available wherever you're watching this video. Thanks a lot. Take care.